Alrighty, there we go. Welcome, folks, to the Freakers Ball, live on RealLibertyMedia.com. If a bit, a little, little, bit, a little, little late, yeah, we are. We're live here right now, RealLibertyMedia.com, channel one, channel one, whatever. We're on the Freakers Ball channel, so come on over to the show. <laughs> And uh, join us here on the Freakers Ball. We'll be glad to have you here with us tonight. I think everything's going right. Uh, I'm looking. It looks like we are streaming there, streaming there, streaming there. Yeah, it's all looking good. We're live on uh, various sites on the audio stream, on freedomsnetwork.com, on realliberty.org, on uh, rlmradio.xyz, and uh, all the other places we could possibly be out there. We're there. Uh, if if it's if that be the case, uh, looks like we are though. So I'm looking and I'm double checking everything as I go, and it all looks pretty darn good to me. So uh, how the heck y'all doing on this Friday night, December 14, uh, 2018? And uh, Moose Girl will call in in a minute. She uh, tried to call a little earlier, but uh, I missed that. So she'll be back soon, soon quick quickly enough, and uh, we'll be. Glad to have you here with us tonight. Uh, what else am I thinking about? Well, howdy to all the folks over here in the Real Liberty Media uh, chat on Freenode. Yes, indeed, we got a great group of folks here tonight. We got the barman. We got the beetle. Beetle! At, at, at a freaker's ball. How how odd and rare is that? We got Cowboy Tech, and we got myself in the Moose Girl. We got Miss Kate. Mr. Asmo and Calcedonian Circle and Chloe Gibberzilla. Gooba! And Graham Z, still awake? Grammy? Anyway, she had a great show earlier. Uh, we got Don C and Meester Brow, Meister Brow, and Ponder Gander, Pokesified, Pokesophone, Rain in the Fluke Bot. And we got Mr. Rob, works still awake, Mr. Rob. Alright, we got Trust No One and Vin E, the Phantom, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dick Gilder, Frumpy Grummet. Wow, all kinds of people. So many people tonight. All right, we got Java Doctor. <laughs> we got uh, JJ's 999. We got the Kozu and the Moe and the Pone Sauce and the Sock Puppet and Skid All. Wow. Quite, quite the listing tonight. Of lots of great folks here with us this evening. Why does this look wrong? Something looks weird here. I don't know what it is, but uh, I, I, it just does. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what that is. We got somebody coming in on the wire. That, that's what's going on. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hearing the wire. The wire sounds. Okay. Are we there? There we are. Hello. I hear you now. Ah, yeah, I hear you. All right. <laughs> hey, Moose Girl, how are you? Hey, I'm good. That's good. That's good. What? Uh, what? Sorry. What? Sorry, I was crackling. Oh. <laughs> You're like bacon. Over there, crack, yeah. <laughs> crack, crackling like bacon. Uh, so uh, how are you doing? Doing good. Yeah. Yep. Well, great. That's great. Um, how, Hanging with the new pup. So, so you got the new dog there, and yeah. um, he's he's doing really really good. I, I noticed you're uh, <laughs> crackling Rosie, like crackling Rosie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So. Um, <laughs> So I notice you're still calling him Pup. Yeah, I don't know yet. I haven't decided on the name for him yet. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Well. It's like I looked at all these different names, and so I, what happened was I, I like found too many names. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so well, I, I, I got I, overwhelmed. I already told you what his name is, but, you know. I'm not going with Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be out there having a call. Elvis! <laughs> Elvis! That'd be great. Have you seen Elvis? He's, he's, he's walking around here somewhere. No, you know. <laughs> I'm, that's not my favorite one, Drum. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> But he's doing really good. Um, Zach and his girlfriend stopped by to see him, and I wasn't here. Oh. And they let him out. Well, I, I 
I got back and they were here. And they let him out and he went poop and pee. Oh, wow. It's like, so, it's like, hell yeah. That's terrific. Well, see, where he was, they had an indoor-outdoor door. Yeah. Because it was like a walkout basement. Right. And then under the, there was like a deck up above, but under that, that walkout, they had like a fenced-in area. With, the fence wasn't closed. And it, so we're, we were there for like over an hour checking out these dogs. The lady, she's kind of a weird lady. Very nice lady, but just kind of different, you know. And she's just telling us how, oh, yeah, this dog, blah, blah, blah. I had him. He got smacked on the highway. This dog, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, if you're letting 14 week old puppies wander loose, mm-hmm. they're going to get fucking hit by cars. I mean, come and, on. And is that how old, is that, is that how old the dog is? Yeah. 14 weeks. Yeah, well, his birthday was September 3rd. Oh, okay. So he's about three months. That's good. Yeah, I, I, yeah. A, lot, a lot of places let him go at six weeks, so. Right, right. Yeah. So he was spending time with all these other dogs, you know. Now, now he is a, a AKC? ACA, which that's fine with me. I don't care. All right, I, I don't know. What I'm not is. planning on breeding them. I don't care about AKC. You, if you want to go to AKC, you're going to pay 12 to Twelve hundred to fifteen hundred for a fucking dog. Oh, and what's what's Fuck ACA? That. What's ACA for? I think it's American Canine Association. Oh, okay. I don't know. I I'm not in it to breed dogs, so All right. you know I, I just, just want to Jack wondering. Russell. <laughs> you know. Just wondering. <laughs> yeah. No, I saw the. Uh, he is registerable. Though. He's purebred. I mean. Yeah. So she gave me the papers. She gave me the the form to fill out to change ownership. Of, you know. So he, I could breed him if I wanted. I could sire, you know, use him as a sire. But sometimes unneutered dogs can be aggressive. And he's not neutered. No, not right now. No. So, um, I will probably get him neutered. Yeah, well, I guess if so, you know, if if you're, if if you're not ever going to let him breed, then it's probably better for him. Right? Yeah, it's best to do that, or just let him breed. <laughs> well, you have to hook him if you want. I mean, yeah, I could let him run loose in the neighborhood, just you know, no, see no, which but... bitch he can find that's in heat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, who cares if it's a German Shepherd, right? <laughs> German Shepherd Jack uh, Jack Russell mix. Okay. No, no I, I would, I I mean, would not do it that they, way. They, they that probably, not the, he's not a res dog. I don't live on the reservation. All right. Yeah, but they they probably have like you know um, uh, some kind of a, a message board or something that 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 group yes. yeah, that ACA that yes know, other people that that want to you know um, have their female dogs breed. So. Right. Right. Yeah. So I mean, you could whatever. Anyway. I'm glad the you got. I'm glad. One? I'm glad you finally got one, and and, yeah. and it's him. Yeah, the fourteen, <laughs> the fourteen week female they had. She was really pretty. Her coloring was really nice. She was almost all that that fawn color. Yeah. But she was very skittish and very scared of everything. This one, he would. He was like the bravest one, you know. He seemed to like us the best, so that's why we kind of leaned towards him. Okay. So and we let almost me, let me, brought home a ten month old one. <laughs> oh, wow. So, she was a sweetheart though. She wanted all the attention. It was hard to like see the puppies, the other puppies, because she wanted all the attention. Right. The right. ten month one. And she was a sweetheart. Yeah. But I did, we just decided on one for now. <laughs> so uh, let me ask you, like right mm-hmm. now, if you wanted him to come over to you, what would you say? Come here. Just that. Just Yeah. <laughs> Yep. All right. All right. So, yeah. he's he's a smart dog. I'm I'm surprised. I'm impressed with this dog. Oh well, yeah, you, you you know you know the Jack Russells are smart. So oh yeah, they're very smart dogs. So that's cool. Yeah, he's sleeping right now. I think I wore him out good today. <laughs> well, he's been used to playing all day for you know for hours at a time with other dogs. You know, Riley Jackson, Kate. Riley? 
Riley Jackson. There was a dog we tr- I tried to adopt when the boys were young and I lived up in Hayward and it did not work out well and his name was Riley. Ah. Which doesn't really matter. I could no, still use no. him yeah. again, but sure. we kind of got him from my mom. And so they named him Riley. And I thought I could handle him, but I had twin babies, you know, and it I could I didn't have enough time to devote to the dog. And he was just running, wreaking havoc. <laughs> well, they do that. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't trained very well at all. So, yeah, yeah. anyway, that one ended up getting adopted. Someone took him, said they would take him and adopt him. So, Finley. <laughs> Finley is cute. I like Finley. Yeah. I just, I got overwhelmed. I looked, I, I I have a list of like 50 names. It's like, how do you narrow it down? You know? Right. And then today when he was out in the snow, he was like kind of hopping. Mm-hmm. And Marty kind of did that too when we first got him when he was younger. Sure. It's pretty funny to watch, but um, I was going to call him Tigger. I'm like, no, Tigger's a fucking tiger. Well, how, how deep is the snow? Just a couple inches. We just have a couple inches of snow. Yeah. So he he'd never seen snow before. So right. He was born on September third. They didn't have snow at the farm where he was at. So him being here was the first time he'd ever seen snow. He was like freaking out yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cute. And then today he was like making tunnels in the snow with his nose. Mm-hmm. It was so cute. Oh my god. That's great. Yeah, he's he's pretty cool. So. Excellent, excellent. All right, we'll yeah, play I some music here. I, I, I'll say a name, and, and he, he just doesn't even respond. It's like, and, okay, well, that's not, that didn't do anything. And, and have you tried calling him Elvis? Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's play some music. We'll, All right, let's do that. We'll come we'll back on the other side of this bit here, these yeah. few bits. What, what, what is going on here? Oh, I never changed the camera back. That's what happened. Oh, sure. um, it was all black. Yeah, it was black. <laughs> oh, I didn't uh, tell you. I was going to tell you, but I thought I figured you knew. I, I didn't know no, I, I was no, nah, I didn't. Anyway, here we go. Thanks okay. uh, for tuning in to the Freakers Ball, everybody. We'll be back in a few after we this, will. after these tunages. Very nice, very nice indeed there. A Moose Girl request, Bush, covering Fleetwood Mac's Landslide. Before that, we had the Amboy Dukes and Journey to the Center of the Mind uh, from Monroe's Retro. Yes, indeed. And we kicked it off with another Moose Girl request, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas, a flood live at Montreux back in 1985. Uh, Yeah, great stuff there. Hope you all enjoyed that. And you too, Miss Moose, since they were two of the three were your requests. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, very, very, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Yeah. Very good. Um, right. uh, that Gavin Rossdale, he's, he's got a pretty good voice. Oh yeah. Rock and roll voice. Yep. Yeah. For sure, I like hearing a male do that song. It's different to hear that. I like I like that a lot. Oh, so that's sure, why I requested sure. that one. Yeah, but yeah. um, it's one of my favorite songs of all time, actually. Is that so? Yeah, one of them. Okay, cool. So anyway, bleach. Oh, dude, I wouldn't use bleach on your bong. No, definitely don't use bleach on well, the bong. You, you don't want to be smoking bleach, dude. <laughs> well, it does evaporate pretty well, but I, still. I, I know, but you make sure, if you do use bleach and it works, make sure you rinse it out really, really good. Right. I mean, I don't know. I, I would, uh, let me just look something up here. Right. How to clean a bong. 
You grunge off. They, they still sell grunge off. How to clean a bong or a bowl or a bubbler. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what you'll need to clean your bong. Before we dive into the best way to clean your bong, we'll start with what you can use to clean your piece of that icky resin. Yes, we'll cover how to clean your bong without rubbing alcohol. Uh, what to use to clean a bong? A bong. Uh, 91% isopropyl alcohol, 70% isopropyl alcohol, 100% acetone, which is nail polish remover, lemon juice, 420 formula, weed wipes, and then some other all-natural toxic-free bong, bong cleaning solution. Anyway, um, it says... Epsom salt, coarse sea salt, kosher salt, rock salt, and a bong cleaning brush. I have heard people use salt. I have heard that. Um, don't, don't they still sell grunge off? I don't know, but you can do what natural. You don't have to go out and buy something, Grim. You can do it what you have at home. Let me oh. go to a different site. Well, give me the give me the link to that one. That you just put okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we used to use. Of course, after a period of time, the uh, the grunge off will crack the acrylic if you're using it. Right, you don't bond. want that. That's a, a uh, in, in my mind, I'm thinking of a glass bong. Were, were you on the wiki how? Is that, the, is that where you were? No. Bong Buddy Inc. Oh, okay, because you just gave me a link to the... Uh... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hang on a second. I got it here. Oh, okay, it. sorry. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, here we go. Let me go to this one. Oh, yes, I am at least 21. Thank you very fucking much. Um, you just turned 29 a couple of days ago. What the hell? Right, I know. Hot water, rubbing alcohol, salt, cotton balls, Q-tips, hand towels, small Ziploc bags, or Tupperware containers with lids, bottle brush, or pipe cleaners. That's what you'll need. Uh, dump out the bong water. That's your first step. Really? Thank you for telling me that. Like, I didn't fucking know that one. <laughs> Take apart your bong. Rinse everything with hot water. Put each loose piece in its own container. Yeah. I mean, each piece of the bong. Right, right. After you seal the baggies or flask containers, shake them vigorously. This moves the alcohol. Well, in the baggie, there's alcohol and salt in the baggie, right? Right. So then you shake it vigorously. This moves the alcohol and salt through all the tiny curves and crevices and breaks up the marijuana resin that is gathered there. Nice. If you think you shake it enough, shake more. You may have to do this for at least five minutes to really dislodge the sticky mess. And then sure. if you add enough alcohol, let them soak for 10 to 15 minutes, the pieces. Um... Pour the salt in the bong, pour alcohol in the bong, plug the holes, shake, and then rinse everything with hot water, repeat. So there, I'll give you this link, too. All right, that, that link I just put in there, that's the, the, the grunge off. You, you can buy it on Amazon. Am okay, well, you don't, you can use home home products, too, that work just as good. I've oh, heard no, people I, that I swear by the, the salt, the salt and the alcohol. Sure. That's what they use. Salt and alcohol. Ultimate guide. The ultimate guide. The ultimate guide. Yeah, damn right, baby. <laughs> That's what they call it. You know, I don't know if it's the ultimate anything, but it seems right to me. <clears throat> well, yeah, clean bong's better because, you know, the more clogs they get, the harder it is to take a draw. Well, that, no, it just tastes better. Yeah, it tastes clean nasty bong, you know. So, uh, yeah, so it's a good idea to do it a lot. Yeah. You know, don't let it get so bad where it takes, it's a pain, real pain in the ass to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, just, uh, that, you know, we talked about that because it's being talked about in the chat room, so... That's how we kind of do it here. That's what we do. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Yeah, you don't want to, you, you, especially if you're sharing it with a lot of people, exactly, Woody, you don't want to be using dirty bong water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. It works fine for ceramic, glass, too. You can, no rubber, you can't use boiling water. That's true, Kate. Yeah, it, it's also fine for ceramic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, well, you know, there, there's various <laughs> different methods you can use. It's just, that's, that's I wouldn't a, run out and buy a bunch of stuff to just to clean my bong. I mean, if you want to go that route, you could, but. That's, that's a new way of vaping there, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> the original vape. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, let's see what I got. Oh, I was just shocked because um, a guy that I... Never mind. I'm not going to even talk about it this show. I might next show, but... <laughs> all right. <laughs> I posted the link about it yesterday. That's all I'm going to say on it. It was just... I worked at the grocery store for a short time. One of the guys that was in training with me, I'll just give you a nutshell, was arrested for child pornography and child sexual abuse. Uh, so, yeah. Jeez. I knew something was kind of off with the guy. You know how you meet somebody, you, just, you can't really place it. Like, I couldn't really place it. I thought, you know, whatever, you know. Never met the guy before, you know, who knows. But anyway, I'm, right. I'm pretty sure he does not, he won't have a job there anymore. Well, I, he's probably going to be in jail. In prison. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't think, yeah, that, I don't I think mean, a job is most of his worries right now. The thing about it was that um, he was living at the Beacon House. He's from Abbotsford, which is an hour away from Eau Claire. And he did have a wedding ring on, which doesn't mean shit, you know. But he's he's from Abbotsford, but he was living at the Beacon House in Eau Claire, which is like a shelter for family, homeless families and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if it... Uh, I don't know. But it's uh, just, you just know to show you, you just never know. I mean, you he don't look never like know. That's, fucking, that's true. That's, uh... He doesn't look like you would think, you know expect someone to look that does that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's just, it was just, well, you mean, know, well, it's weird when uh, it hit me. The thing is, what do they look like? Do they look like priests? Well, just a normal person. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know what, what does somebody look like? Here's this, here, here, here's the picture of him. Just looks, I mean, he kind of looks a little, I mean, knowing what you know about him, you have a skewed view, you know what I mean? Not no, I did. I did for a short time slot, but not any longer. That wasn't that job was not a good job for me. <laughs> not I don't at know. All. He, lo he looks pretty pervy to me. That's a... Yeah, he like I said, I thought something was not. You know, I couldn't tell what it was. You know what I mean? Not like I knew anything, but just ugh. yeah. Nasty. Oh, uh, he's a douchebag, and... You just, and you, you know... Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. It might have been his own children, for what we know. You know what I mean? Right, we don't know. I don't know, but you know, maybe. I don't even know if that information will be released. Be released, but yeah. It is sick, you know. It's 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 just such a... Uh, yeah, it's anyway, not, it's really not so much the... Uh, on that. It was just it was just something that I was just like, oh my fucking god. Yeah, I mean, and to me it's not so much the child porn here as it is he's uh, admitted to sexually assaulting two young girls. Right, he admitted so, the, assault, the assault part. You know. And that's the term, that's obviously step overstepping, that, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, long, long ways over, long ways yeah. over. Yeah, <laughs> a long ways over. All right, let's talk about someone else. Hey, yeah, Becky. Let's do that. I'm sorry. I... That's okay. That's okay. Um, t tomorrow night is it? Tomorrow night? No, Sunday night. Okay, Sunday night. Uh, brightest comet in the night sky set for close flyby. This is from last week, but it says next week, so it is this Sunday when it could be visible to the naked eye. Uh, comet 46P Wurtanian is already close enough to be seen with a telescope. NASA said it will 
uh, be its closest on December 16th and may be visible to the naked eye. The periodic comet can be seen above the eastern horizon, horizon and casts a green glow. So, uh, if you're out there, night sky watchers, you know, and you don't mind the cold too much, uh, get on out there and try and pick up on this comet. It's a, it'll look like a, hey, what's that green thing? And no, it's not E.T., it's just a comet. Uh, so it's uh, going to be its, its closest and now is the brightest comet in the night sky with the green glow. Uh, comet 46P, Wirtanian, how do you say this? W-I-R-T-A-N-E-N. Wirtanian? W-I-R-T-A-N-E-N. Uh, yeah, Wirtanian? Wirtanian, maybe, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, so it's a 5.4 year orbit, so you may have seen it back in 2012. I don't know, 2013, somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it looks pretty cool. And, uh, did I, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I always, always like these uh, different uh, sky astral events, whatever you want to call them. They uh, are always kind of neat to look at and see what the hell's going on up there and out there in the goddamn, goddamn sky. <laughs> <laughs> And I haven't heard anybody, uh, in the, I haven't heard of any uh, suicide groups over this one yet, so. Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there will be. Well, the, you never know, you never know. Get your oh, ticket, yeah. get your ticket on the next sky, uh, uh, thing flying through the, start flying through the sky. <laughs> oh my God. What? What? Um. A woman in Pennsylvania, this is from, well, the story is from today, it happened yesterday. Oh. Woman who was, uh, a woman from Pennsylvania survived a vicious bear attack on Wednesday with the help, uh, with the help of her pet chihuahua named Bear. Wow. <laughs> Investigators say Melinda LeBaron was outside her home with her dog when the bear grabbed her leg and dragged her, dragged her more than 80 yards from the back porch of her home in Lycoming County. She was able to get back in the house and was able to contact the neighbor who called 911. Friends say she suffered broken bones and deep wounds as a result of the bear attack right outside Muncie. Uh, she has survived but listed in critical condition. Bear, who is a female dog, is currently being treated at the Susquehanna Trail Animal Hospital for a broken sternum, punctured lung, and a number of external wounds. Um... The woman that was attacked said she survived because of the dog. Now, um, now, now how does a chihuahua fend off a bear? Just by being a pain in the ass to it, pestering it, all right, all right. barking at it. Because that seems like, you know, like maybe a, a, a little light snack for the bear. Well, yeah. That's <laughs> chihuahua, chihuahua's a brave dog there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, Kate, didn't I say this Sunday? I thought I said this Sunday. This Sunday what? Oh. This is the 16th when the comment Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, wow. That's, you know, they're not hibernating yet, apparently. And this was a black bear. That's weird. Well, Who knows why it happened? I don't know. Must, she must have annoyed the bear. Wow. Well, uh, hopefully she pulls through. And hopefully the bear does, too. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm not blaming the bear. I'm just, you know. No, no, I know. It doesn't, yeah. it, does it say what the uh, outcome, uh, they, the bear got away, or? It doesn't say. It's... Yeah. All right. Go back. Oh, he's a cute little doggy. Yeah. yeah, it is a cute dog. Bear. That's Wawa. Why would you name a Chihuahua Bear? <laughs> I don't know. See, I'm I'm having a hard time coming up with a name for a dog. So, right, uh, wow. let's see if it says what happened to the bear. She was able to get away, call for help. Then the game commission's investigating. All right, so the bear's on the loose. Identify a particular bear. No, they did not have the bear. The bear got away. Get away, bear! Get away! Yeah. It says, yeah, it says they don't often, game wardens claim that black bears don't often attack people unless there's some kind of a motivation for an attack. Right. Really, they are right. more of a nuisance, which is true. 
Yeah, no, I, you know, whatever. Usually they don't want to, but black bears won't attack like that. That's interesting that it did. Right, right. Hmm. Yeah, well, he had to, but the dog attacked the bear, or tried to, you know, obviously the bear probably just swatted it once, and, you know, <laughs> into the dog. Yeah, you know what I really want to be... But if it was a, if the dog distracted the bear enough for the woman to get away, then that's freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know. Right. So that's pretty cool. It is. I mean, a little little dog like that. Yeah. So what the hell? Right. So that was just interesting. I just found that one. <laughs> We do it. That's how I do it. <laughs> okay, well, here's something that happened this okay. week. Here, here's something that happened this week. The RAF, the Royal Air Force Typhoons, which is their, were their fighter jets, uh, scrambled in response to unidentified aircraft approaching the UK. Ooh! <laughs> the, the, the fighter jets took to the cool. skies from RAF Lossy Mouth for the first time with the new air-to-air -air missile called the Meteor. Um, the ty typhoons have been scrambled in response to the UFO. The, <laughs> fire, fire, the fighter jets took off from the, from there on Monday, this just this previous Monday, carrying those uh, Meteor air-to-air -air missiles for the first time, said the Ministry of Defense. The quick reaction alert mission was undertaken as a precautionary measure, it added. Uh, no intercept took place, and the jets later returned to the base in Moray, northeast Scotland. The MOD has not confirmed any further details about the unidentified aircraft. <laughs> the meteor, which can fly in uh, any weather, uh, developed by the Six Nation European Partnership, led by the UK um, uh, yeah, they don't really talk about the UFO other than they were chasing one, don't they, and they didn't catch it. So, the UFO got away. Oh, cool. Well, I don't think they could catch it. Well, we don't know. We, we, we don't know what they were looking at, but... Right. We got, we got to assume it was otherworldly. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, UFOs flying in, fly into the UK. All the time. They, they, they probably wanted some some, some uh, beer and some bangers. Yeah, or something. <laughs> yeah, or something. <laughs> <laughs> mm, or maybe, maybe they heard uh, the, the Spice Girls were going to go on tour again and they wanted to put a stop to it. <laughs> <laughs> You never, yeah. know. <laughs> you, never, you never know. You never know. All right, let's hear some more tunes here. Yeah, let's uh, do that. And uh, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back. We will. We'll do that. Trust in that. Yep. This here is a band called Greta Van Fleet. And Mike Henderson doing a mic, uh, wait, waiting on the bus, and uh, Jesus uh, just left Chicago back from February of last year. Before that, a new one from the Reverend Horton Heat, Hog Tying Woman. Uh, that video was just released on November 30th. And we kicked it off with Greta Van Fleet uh, doing When the Curtain Falls live in Toronto, and that video was on December 6th. So we got some new stuff there for you. Hope you enjoyed that. Absolutely, nice. I did. Because uh, that's, 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 you know. It's, uh, nice to have some new stuff from the Reverend Horton Heat, man, I tell you. That, yeah, all, that, that was really that, cool. I that's like all it. good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. All right, where are we at here? So, okay. This 
Cohen dude, right? Cohen? Michael Cohen. Oh, that's uh, one of those Trump guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, he's going to be really fucking pissed off. Because? Because the fucking, it's, Trump is lying. Okay. About being present when they were doing these payoffs for these sex people, or whatever the fuck they were. Uh, you know what I mean? Sex people. <laughs> <laughs> sex people. That had to be the sex people. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so he's saying that he he deal, dealt directly with the national employer. You know, and I just read this article yesterday. I didn't go into depth about it, but it just said, said something to the, the fact that, or the effect that Trump is worried about impeachment now. It's like, you fucking should be. But, you know, it doesn't, it's just all a big fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. Um, you know, this Cohen guy is taking the fall. Oh, well, he's probably a scumbag too, isn't he? Well, yeah, he's a lawyer, so, yeah, you know. Uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> so, there you go. But, yeah, I mean... I try not to pay too much attention to it, but right. I just... I, I was looking at a picture of this Cohen dude today, and you can tell he's been through the fucking ringer, dude. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean... And so apparently he went on the Today Show or some show like that and, you know, basically came out and said, you know, Trump's lying. Okay. Which, who knows if it's, who knows what? You know, I don't like it. You know what I mean? Who knows? But, it's just been, it seems to me, and this is by design, I'm sure, Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that ever since Trump took office, it's just been, like, all chaotic and all, you know what I mean? Like, he he hires these guys and he fires these guys, and then there's just no, like, continuity at all. What? You know, like, in the past, that's that's they, by design, is it not? In the past, it's traded as being, you know, having continuity and being organized and being, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. This guy is just all over the fucking map. And I think it's done by, I know it's done by design. It's to keep everyone, like, battling against each other and everyone on their edge of their seats and everyone just, like, tense, you know? Mm -hmm. They don't want to want, they, they want to see, and I've said this so many fucking times, they want to <laughs> see division amongst the people. Sure. So they do shit like this to keep that going. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is it, people need to see past that. Past the Republican Democrat shit. You need to see the bigger picture. And right. That's what I would look at more than just sectioning it out like that. And, it, and then you would see what it's really all about. What we've been trying, what we've been talking about on the show since its inception, right? Sure. I mean, you would see it, but most people are content to be in this. I'm right, you're wrong. You're, I'm right, we're right, you're wrong. They, they, they love it. They feed off of it. They feed off of that, that derision and that division. It drives them because they believe so much in their soul and in their heart that they're fucking right. You know. Right. And so that's what drives them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can get out of that. If you get tired of it, you can get out of it. By seeing the bigger picture. Okay. Connecting the dots. I don't know. No, you, absolutely. It, it, it's it, it's such a waste of time, I think. And I know that by being ra racist, a racist fucking dickhead or a prick or something, 
or being a fucking religious fucking fanatic where I'm fucking, oh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a waste of, it's, I mean, I get people believe what they believe in shit. I understand that, but people are so, it seems, so misdirected and just eating right into their rhetoric and their, their, their agenda and they, you know, the way they want it to go. You know, people were making fun of the people in the yellow vest in France because at first when it started happening, people just said, oh, it's all those Muslims and it's all them immigrants that are in there. No, guess what? That's not who it was. No, it was not. You guys. <laughs> it was not. That's not what happened. That's uh, not what it, who it was. Uh, but, 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 you know, that's all being co-opted now and taken over oh, by, yeah. the, by, by the lefties there. Yeah. And, uh, so... So, if, when you buy right into the mainstream media and the corporate propaganda, the lame class, we call it, the corporate lame-ass propaganda, when you buy into it, you're eating, you're, you're doing exactly what they want you to do. What the government wants you to do. Oh, absolutely. You're doing exactly what, that you're being a good citizen. <laughs> a voter. <laughs> you know, good little citizen. Oh God. <laughs> even though, and, and then the thing that kills me or gets me is that you, people think that oh they're so ingrained they they know they're fucking right even if they're not fucking right they have no problem pulling the nasty card out and being just all as mean as they can fucking be. You know? Sure. They have no problem because, God dang it, they fucking know better than you do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they know because whatever whatever reason they give you, they it's because it's, they know better than you do. It's like, oh, okay then. Okay then. Anyway, well, well, let me, I live let me, in Wisconsin. I was, well, I was, I was going to share this, this here with oh, you. Yeah, go ahead. This little gem I came across earlier this week, although it's from March of 2017, I just I just oh. ran, <laughs> I just ran okay. across I just ran across it this week and it All caught right. my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Scientists get the green light to resurrect the dead with stem cells. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, my God. What? <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> so uh, a company, Bio, Bio Quark, a biotech company based in the U.S., has been given the go-ahead to begin research on 20 brain-dead patients in an attempt to stimulate and regrow neurons and literally bring the patients back from the dead. The technique is new and untested, so the study will likely be controversial. Yeah, think. <laughs> anyway, anyway, by implanting <laughs> implanting stem cells in patients' brains, in addition to treating the spinal cord with infusions of chemicals and nerve stimulation techniques, both of which have been shown to bring people out of comas, they hope to reboot the brain and start neural jumpstart neural activity. Uh, the result could be people coming back to life. There isn't much evidence that this will work, uh, though there's uh, one well-known neurological researcher and a member of the American Academy of Neurology, Dr. Calixto Mercado, who is involved uh, in the in, in involved with the studies as a panel expert. Um, BioCork CEO Ira Pastor said that. To undertake such a complex initiative, we are combining biological regenerative medicine tools with other existing medical devices typically used for stimulation of the central nervous system. In patients with other severe disorders of conscious, we hope to see results in the first two to three months. He added, it's a long-term vision of ours to that a full recovery of such patients is a possibility. Although, uh, that is not the focus of the first study. Uh, well, here's the thing on bringing people back from the dead. Did you ever see Pet Cemetery? Yeah. 
ever read the book Pet Cemetery? Yes. <laughs> it's 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 not you know it, it's 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 not a good idea to go messing with that. Ah, uh, you don't want to. You, you seen The Walking Dead? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be messing around with no Frankenstein. <laughs> well, we're, we're talking. I, I mean, if these people are brain dead, then then they have left the body. Yes, they're gone. They are no longer they're not. with us. So whatever you bring back, it's not going to be exactly the same that, thing. That's not. That's not. It's not even going to be close to the same well, what thing. What was that program that I saw in Iceland? Remember that with the ancient fucking ice or something? The bugs on the ancient ice. Remember that? Did you ever watch that? The bugs of the ancient ice. Oh, you oh, never oh. That? Um, fortitude. 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 Yeah. It's kind of like that along them lines. Yeah, you know I mean? you yeah. Don't know what you're gonna get? That, that was a good show, actually. Start going around messing with stuff. I, I enjoyed that show. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. So uh, I anyway, you uh, that. I, I thought you did. Yeah, I think I recommend. You're it. the one that told me about it. Yeah, so. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah, that's 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 what your uh, that's what your tax dollars are going to bringing uh, people. You don't want to be bringing people back from the dead. <laughs> That can't be good. I mean... No. No, that can't be good at all. That just can't be a good thing. Oh, man. Oh, you were talking about the yellow vest. I have a story here for you. Okay. I mean, but uh, are they trying to bring them back? Bring what back? Be, like they were, like, in full human form? Like yeah, they, they said were they're, hoping, they're hoping or for... Or just a... to, like, save their organs or something. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, they, I they, don't well, no way. It says they're, they're looking for a full recovery. Which means oh, they wow. think they can bring the person back just as they were before they died. Uh, no. Even because they, those organs will be dead way too long. No, no, no. They're they're on they're on uh, you know machines. Oh, you mean they're being the, kept alive? Yeah, they're being machines. kept uh, artificially oh, kept see. alive. They're brain dead. They're, they're not they're, like buried. In the, in no, the no, no, they're not. Well, at this point in time, I don't believe they're out there Sorry, digging. I, that part. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe they're out there digging folks up out of the ground. Right. And, yeah. Okay, I was gonna say that would definitely not work. But you know, well, you know, once they once they bring those people back, if they bite you, then you're yeah, yeah. you don't want to go there. You know. <laughs> All right. Wow. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so on the yellow vest, this is from earlier, earlier this week, and it's it's from a site. You have to you know take everything with a grain of salt, but uh, this is from a site called the American Conservative. So, um, it says, France's yellow vests take a left turn. The, the anti-tax protesters are being replaced by something closer to Antifa. What ultimately will emerge from all of this. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so, uh, it says, when Fren French President Emmanuel Macron uh, addressed his country on television Monday night, uh, there was one Gillette Jean, I, I, I don't know what the hell that means, uh, in the BMTV studio, a middle-aged man in a yellow vest surrounded by half a dozen regular center-left and center-right talking heads. He took notes during the 13-minute speech before him being called upon to comment. Macron, or Macron, how do you say that guy's name? Anyway. I think it's Macron. Macron, okay. Macaroni. I, I don't know. Macaroni. Uh, had decided, macaroni. Had decided the, the violence of the past week. Uh, what De decried, not decided, decried the violence of the past week, uh, praised the police, expressed some contrition for his government failings, and announced four specific measures to aid in France's working poor and pensioners. Finally was the man's emph emphatic initial reaction, while noting that M Macron, Macaroni's, concessions alone won't go far enough. But he also acknowledged that Macron had finally heard the countrywide grievances of the forgotten middle and welcomed the prospect of a renewed social pact to <laughs> reduce the gas between France's, I don't know what these words are, perifique, whatever that is, and its more prosperous cities. Um, anyway, I don't need to read it to you. You got the, you got the point from the, from the headline. That, yeah. that that they're bringing in they're bringing in uh, anti fos type type people. Uh, Imagine that to 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 co opt these these protests. So um, yeah. whatever you saw as the initial uh, 
protests out there that they were good, that it was proper. Um, and then some of the macaroni's uh, promises after that, he says, oh, well, these people don't like the, uh, the, the, the taxes on, on the fuels, so we'll put that off for a while. Well, what? What do you mean? So you're still going to do it. You're just not going to do it while everybody's all upset right now. That's what you're saying? <laughs> and then instead uh, of that, instead of anti-tax protesters, they bring in these lefties that love every tax they ever met. Uh, yeah, you know, I, everything you see, whether regardless of what the initial purpose of it was, um, like the Tea Party, take the Tea Party for example. That started as an anti-government uh, yep. thing based upon people that uh, heard the words of Ron Paul and said, "Hey, he's right. We got to we got to cut this this government back to the nil, back to the nub." But but then these people like Glenn Beck came in and screwed it all up and made it all about pro-government crap, just not the not the uh, Democrat side. <laughs> uh, and so the same thing happens every time. Well, you know, it could be the, the Occupy movement um, that yeah. that started off with good intentions, I do believe, um, but was very yep, quickly very quickly co-opted on that one. Oh, big time. And, uh, and so it doesn't matter which one it is. They're going to move their people in and take over yep. your movement and screw it all up. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah. So um, you got to be careful getting in getting in, and get behind these things and, and, and investing your, your feelings into them because right. uh, it's quickly going to turn around on you and be something that you want no part of, but you've already said, hey, I'm part of this, and then suddenly... What what you were part of is something wrong now, so uh, yeah, right. uh, just be careful on all that stuff. Um, yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so we go from bringing people back from the dead to Antifa. <laughs> <laughs> Which those people are kind of zombies anyway. I, I yeah, mean, you have to admit. Bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, oh man. But anyway, um, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker signed a sweeping package of Republican-written legislation Friday that restricts early voting, weakens the incoming Democratic governor and Attorney General. Brushing aside complaints that he is enabling a brazen power grab and ignoring the will of voters. Signing the bill just 24 days before he leaves office. The Republican governor and one-time presidential candidate downplayed bipartisan criticism that they amount to a power grab that will stain his legacy. What I'm legacy? Surprised. They do all this crap all the time. Does, it, does he have a legacy? No. A lot of his legacy is a sucky one. According to me... Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it, he he was just he was just a, a cock boy. Coke, Coke brothers, yep. Yeah, yeah, that, that's all he ever was. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see him having any kind of legacy. No. Other, other than just being a douchebag. Yeah, <laughs> he's always been that. So. so uh, Whatever. Yeah, you know, it's it's all stupid. Yeah, you know, I'm not happy about Evers being the dude because if he's an education guy, you know he's going to be anti weed. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Most uh, likely, I mean I don't know. I, I mean I, I I'm I'm I'm, yeah. I'm personally all in favor of education, just not government based education. And right, right. And well, you got to have some kind of education. Or you'll be you won't be able to do anything or know anything. But, you don't know, you know. But but uh, again, I'm all in favor of people doing whatever they want as long as they're not hurting somebody else, which includes weed. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you could be for education and for weed. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, hopefully he is. Yeah, hopefully, with any luck. Yeah. We'll yeah. see. You, you will see. You will have to wait and see on that. I mean, my argument about, well, what a, I mean, the thing I can't understand because you would think all states will want to push this through because it's revenue. Yeah. You know, look what happened in Colorado. It got fucking 
they have too much money. They don't know what to do with all of it. Well, no. <laughs> they, see, they had a rule uh, up there, the Taxpayer yeah. Bill of Rights in Colorado, uh, that limited how, how much tax they could take in. Right, and which of was course, a good thing. And, of course, they, they continually try and bypass that and override it and push oh, it out right, of the way. Right. But it's in their Constitution because they voted it into their Constitution. So mm -hmm. when when they started taxing weed at super high levels like they were right. doing, uh, they're still doing to a large degree. Um, yeah. And then people... And they, and, they, and they made it so you could go to the store and buy it, and the tax money just started rolling in like crazy. Yeah, right. Then it was too much, and they had to actually give some back. Of course, then they tried to say, well, we can, we can you know, take some of that money that's not supposed to go into taxes. We'll just use it for schools. And I was like, no, you can't do that because that's still taxing. Because when, we, when you take money and yeah. uh, do that, then, it, then it's still um, taxes. <laughs> so... But, you know, it's government. Once they get a hold of yeah, your money, exactly. they're, they're not going to give it back to you. All this red tape and crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Wow. It's all just right. a nightmare. It, 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 it's all crazy stuff. And, and, it and, is. You try to delve into it and understand it. It's just like uh, your head just starts spinning. You're just like, what the hell? If they could find a way to screw you, they're going to. Yeah, they're gonna. <laughs> oh, did I talk about the fake check? Which fake my check? What? Did I talk about the check that my son got? No. Did I tell you about that? No. Oh, okay. So my son gets this FedEx envelope, like just a, a cardboard envelope, you know? Right. Flat. And, you know, it, it sits it sits in the house for three, four days, you know, and then he shows up here. I'm oh, you got this in the mail, you know, it opens it up. The check-in sign for $2,950. All right. He's like, oh, I must have got a scholarship. He's all excited, all happy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and then he, there's a couple pieces of paper with it, you know, just regular business size tape, you know. Right. And I'm like, did you read it, Zach? So I start reading this thing, and it's, from, it's you know, it says Western Union on it. And it also has, like, the Walmart logo on it, right? Okay. And I start reading this letter, and what it is, it said, thank you for deciding to sign up for our survey or to be a secret shopper. And so what it instructed him to do was take deposit the money into his bank account, and then in, within a day go to a MoneyGram place and deposit or send eleven hundred dollars of the check money, right? To was then they gave you the name of the account you were supposed to send it to, right? Mm hmm It said then after that go to a Walmart money service at the in the Walmart store and deposit the you know because he was supposed to he was gonna the amount he was gonna make for doing this was six hundred dollars. So after t you know taking this eleven hundred you you know, he keeps 600 for himself, and the remaining goes to Walmart's MoneyGram service. And they're try it said, you, you know, then you need to contact us and text us back and tell us when you've done this. Right? Right. And I said, Zach, do not cash that fucking check. If I were you, I would rip it up. Right? Yeah. Because you could tell it wasn't like official Walmart. It wasn't official anything, you know. And, and did and it say it, who it was from? It, the, you mean the name on the check? Well, I mean, whatever company it was. It was from a bank. I don't know. I can't remember. It was just, after reading that letter. Bank of Nigeria? What? Bank of Nigeria? No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I know it wasn't that. It's some kind of scam. That's, there ain't no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah, I told him, rip it up, you know. Well, then later on, this was last Friday, in, or whatever. Later on, he texted me, and he, he looked it up online. Yeah. And some and about it, and someone said it's a total scam. Do not do it. Blah blah blah. And they had this like nightmare story posted about what happened in there. Yeah, they, they probably empty out your bank account right after. Well, that. yeah. I said they're just like even his dad told him they're just trying to get your bank information, dude. You know. Yeah. And that, or and then you'll be on the hook for this money. You know. 
or whatever, you know? Right, right. You, you know, oh my god, that could be a real fucking, but anyways, I mean, most people that give stuff like that for now, they're gonna know it's a fucking scam, you know? Right. Zach was all excited at first, I'm like, wait a minute, Zach, I'm like, it's not what you think it is, this is not for a scholarship that you want, sorry buddy, yeah. you know? <laughs> Good try, good try. <laughs> it's like, well, why would they send it to me? I'm like, I don't know. You might, maybe you filled out something online, you didn't realize it, you know? Who knows, yeah, they, they probably You just, know, who knows? You know, whatever, whatever. they do data mining all go, the time and just find people's names and... Oh, I said, I looked at him, I said, Zach, you don't just, people don't randomly just get 20, checks in the mail for $2,900. You know, twenty nine fifty. I'm like, it just doesn't happen. Right. You know, <laughs> like this is a fucking scam. So. Yeah. Well, good. I, At least I he looked it up and realized you. it before he before he got sucked in. Right. Well, you know, if I would have been here or something when he got that, he might have went and deposited it. You know what I mean? Without sure. Reading the yeah. reading the fine print and everything. And so. What sock sock <laughs> puppet? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Who is the host? Where is Moosey's talking right now? What are you, what, I'm not sure. Where, are you trying to confuse me, boy? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I asked him yesterday, I'm like, or the other day, I'm like, you didn't can't deposit that check, did you? He's like, no, I ripped it up. I'm like, good. Yeah. You know, it's like, good, because that could have been bad. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That could have been really bad. <laughs> Anyway, knocking on the wood, you know, but it's just, you got to watch it, you know, you can't just, right, he, he in college, oh, $2,000, oh, yeah, absolutely. Dude, really? <laughs> All right, let's, let's play some board games let's here. Let's do that, yeah. Oh, man, and uh, keep, keep your hands to yourself there, boy. This is my host, my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a Beatle request from back in May. Uh, somebody named Chris Rhea? Uh, beats me. Anyway, here you go. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Lost my spot. Uh, anyways, after was uh, son of a preacher man, as done by Yonder Mountain String Band right there for you. And I knew it was in some movie that I had seen. And apparently that movie was Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, a a anyway, good good tune there. Pulp Fiction, that was in uh, some, not that version. Uh, anyway, Yonder Mountain String Band 4, Mighty Miss Moose Girl. Before that, we had Dr. John, right place, wrong time. And we kicked it off with a Beatle request, Chris Rhea on Road to Hell, The Road to Hell. I I'm not really familiar with... Chris Rhea, but I enjoyed the song. Whoa, a little loud there. Uh, a anyway, so, uh... <laughs> good, yeah, I remember that song when it came out. That was a good song. That's a good, it's still a good song. Yeah, yeah, and after, after looking, at, uh, looking it up, I said, oh, yeah, that's right, that was in uh, there, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that was in, that was in, that was in, that was in Pulp Fiction. Okay. Yeah, so. And I think Beetle went to sleep, so he didn't hear me play the song. Oh, well. Darn. Ah, I know. What do you do? You know, do you... I'm trying to think of something uncommon, Sock. I've, I've looked up Norwegian names. I've looked up Eng well, English, because Jack Russell comes from England. So, it's not like it's, it's Japanese or Chinese, you know what I mean? So, Jack Russell was the name of a guy, right? Yes, and that's what they're named after, is this dude. And so, it's like... You know, I'm trying to go by, like, something in his personality or his behavior. Like, today he started digging that hole out there. Uh-huh. I'm like, well, maybe Digger. I'm like, no, I don't want that. Digger. And I know, dude, this is, his nickname is Digger. It's like, no. <laughs> let's, not, let's not uh, name a dog to do something we don't want him to do. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm thinking, you know. <laughs> so, it, it's, I'm trying to, I looked at, I mean, it's Thor, but Thor is like a, German Shepherd or something, or, you know, or some big dot. Yeah, well... You know, it, or it, it, Odin. It, well, no, if he's mischievous... Yes? Name him Loki, if you want to go... I thought about 
Loki. That I direction. Loki. Loki was on my, like, of the top Norwegian there's Viking historical. Uh, however, Viking. however, uh, I but am... they are mischievous and they cause trouble. They're troublemakers. Yes, they are. Loki, <laughs> and Loki is a troublemaker. Absolutely. You know, do I want to name him that? Do I want to put that word on this dog? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I am not a fan of Mister Loki. No, and so I was like, okay, well maybe something else. <laughs> I don't know. But it's good to have, like, with Marty. Marty was a perfect name because it's two syllables. It ends in that E sound. Yep. And so it's it's, it's just easy to train them to get to know that. You know what I mean? It's easier. Uh, you know, you like could. a one-syllable sil- word, like Thor. You know, it would work, but you'd have to be like, come here, Thor. You know what I mean? It's, it's A two-syllable name will roll off your tongue better, you know? You could just name him Dog. That's why I said to Zach and go, how about D-O-G? Oh, no, D-A-W. Like, I'm like, D-O-G. D- He's like, D- what's that? I'm like, D-O-G. D-A-W-G. Dog. D-A-W-G. <laughs> no, that's too, like, non, it's not personal, you know what I mean? It's too impersonal. Is and it? I thought about bull, but then I was reading some article that said, don't name your dog close to a command. Like, Bo is too close to no. Okay. So you don't really want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, okay. I thought about, I don't know. I don't want to talk about this. It's, it's like I said, I got overwhelmed with dog names. I'm like, okay, I'm taking a break for a minute. Okay, well, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's what happens here in, in the Real Liberty Media chat. If you, you ask for... Or you don't even have to ask. You just right. say, I just you know, I got some stuff. And, and, and you're going to get flooded with people's ideas. But that's fine. I like the ideas. I don't have a problem with that. And I already gave you his name, so you can reject it or what. <laughs> but I'm telling you. You want to name that other dog Martina. <laughs> well, yeah, because it was after Marty. All right, all right. And the boys, I'm like, that. What? I, I was going to do that, though. Yeah. So I would have kept that on, but it didn't work out with that one. But anyway, now I have this <laughs> one. I have to figure out. Like, I thought of, okay. we thought about Iowa. It's like no. Chris Ray of Texas. Oh, okay, thanks, Kate. Yeah, we thought about Iowa. Is he from Iowa? <laughs> it's like no. Can't name a dog Iowa. I mean, you could. Well, why not? Uh, it would be cute, uh, maybe you know. That that's probably the most unique one we've thought of, probably. Or the, you know but the, I mean? but then but then you got to deal with with three syllables. Right, Iowa. <laughs> but it might work if you know. Come Iowa. Wait, you can name them Utah. Why? Oh, I don't know. It's two syllables. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, it's, it's, it's like after that Utah Phillips guy, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to be Charlie, but I can't do Charlie. Why? Kate had a Charlie. So? I know, but... So that's a Charlie Parr, you know. Sure. But I didn't do Charlie. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, let's talk about something else. <laughs> 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 we can sit here and like, throw around names until the show ends. No, right, <laughs> I, I know, unless, unless you... Uh... Decide to you know it'll take you a while and you'll figure it out. All right, yeah, I will. I'll figure it out. I usually do. We're going to no. talk about peanuts. All right, Pe- I like peanuts. I, I like do. peanuts too. I said peanuts. <laughs> peanuts. Not peanuts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although, never mind. Let's just talk. Okay, you're sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so I found this on uh, naturalfoodbenefits.com, the benefits of peanuts. Because, I, I, you know, I, I hear about this crap. Something Have you heard about something? It's called CoQ10. Yes. Are you familiar with it? Not really familiar. I've heard of it. I don't All right. Anyway, so um, let's start just the beginning of the description here. Peanuts are available in various forms, raw, roasted, shelled, unshelled, salted, or unsalted. 
They are enjoyed regularly at baseball games, at circuses, and snacks as on airplane flights. It's probably enjoyed most when it's turned into a gooey butter and paired up with jelly between two slices of bread. Approximately 100 million jars of peanut butter are bought every single year. Here's the deal, the benefits. Whole peanuts contain high amounts of protein, which make it a preferred diet of those people engaged in bodybuilding and those who are weak and underweight. The raw peanut butter... Uh, with crushed skin contains much higher amounts of nutrient than the refined and not only butter. Peanut is a good source of coenzyme Q10, which protects the heart during periods of lack of oxygen, example high altitudes and clogged arteries. Peanuts contain high concentrations of antioxidant polyphenols, primarily a compound called P. cormaric, uh, whatever, I don't know how to say that, uh, acid. Roasting peanuts increases its p cormaric acid levels, uh, boosting at an overall antioxidant content as much as 22%. Roasted peanuts rival the antioxidant, con antioxidant content of blackberries and strawberries and are far richer in antioxidants than apples, carrots, or beets. Unsalted peanuts are good for your arteries. A quarter cup of peanuts contains as much monounsaturated fat as a tablespoon of olive oil. Monounsaturated fats have been found to lower blood cholesterol. Peanuts are high in niacin, contain uh, content, helps in recovery of cell damage, provides protection against Alzheimer's disease and age-related problems. Peanuts contain vitamin E, a powerful antioxidant that is shown to significantly redisc, re, reduce the risk, redisc, reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Peanuts contain iron, which is essential for correct functioning of red blood cells. Peanuts are rich in calcium, which promotes healthy bones. Peanuts have a higher bioflavonoid resveratrol okay, uh, contents than grapes. Uh, the bioflavonoids is be believed to improve blood flow to the brain as much as 30%. That's pretty significant. Thus greatly reducing the risk of stroke. Studies showed that by adding even small amounts of peanut products uh, to the diet, they can reduce the LDL, bad cholesterol, by 14%. Peanuts fiber content helps lower the risk of colon cancer. An ounce of peanut, peanuts contains 2 grams of fiber. Peanuts help accelerate growth of male and female hormones. So there you have it. Get your peanuts today. <laughs> Moose Girl's taking the puppy out. So, yeah, eat some peanuts, and uh, if, you know, you misunderstand no, that. No, I'm good. He just jumped back up on the chair. All right, all right. So if he lays down, then I'm, I might have to in a little bit here, though. All right. Anyway, on that page there, if you go to there to that page, you can mm -hmm. f find out the uh, health benefits of almonds, black seed, Brazil nuts, cashew nuts, chestnuts, hazel nuts, yeah. all, all kinds of freaking nuts. So, um but peanuts, 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 <laughs> peanuts are, are very good for you, and uh, so uh, whatever. There you go. Yes, and, they and, are. and they're cheap. Yes, they are. They're very cheap, and you can get I mean, them. If you try to buy like fancy nuts, like pistachios or cashews, those are expensive. Oh yeah, absolutely. And macadamia is really expensive. In, uh, like very. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's whining. I'm gonna take him All out. All right, you take him out. I'll find. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll be back I'll, as soon as I can. I'll talk about some climate fraud. All right, sounds oh, good. Oh wait, no. Let's talk about Obamacare. <laughs> oh, no. oh yeah, I'll be back. All right. Uh, apparently, and this happened today. Don't buy cheap penis. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for that box. So from uh, Bloomberg dot com. Obamacare thrown out by a judge, raising insurance uncertainty. So apparently today, Obamacare was struck down by a Texas federal judge in a ruling that casts uncertainty on insurance coverage for millions of U.S. residents. The decision Friday, finding the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional, comes at the tail end of a six-week open enrollment period for the program in 2019, which today apparently was the end of that open enrollment, which why they have periods of enrollment doesn't really 
makes sense to me. If you want to buy insurance, you just be able to go buy it whatever you want. What the hell is this open enrollment crap? Anyway, um, and underscores a divide between Republicans who have long sought to invalidate the law and Democrats who have fought to keep it in place. Uh, the White House, what, the White House said the ruling will be put on hold during an appeals process that's destined to go all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, U.S. District Judge Reed O'Connor in Fort Worth, who agreed with a coalition of Republicans, states led by Texas, that had to eviscerate the Affordable Care Act, the signature health care overhaul by Obama, um, after Congress last year zeroed out a key provision the tax penalty for not complying with the requirement to buy insurance. Today's ruling, uh, according to who is this now according to? Oh, some spokesman. All right, today's ruling is an assault on 133 million Americans with pre-existing conditions on the 20 million Americans who rely on the ACA's consumer protections for health care and on America's faithful progress towards affordable health care for all Americans. As if anything about the Affordable Health Care Act was uh, affordable. None of it, none of it was affordable. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, it comes down here. Let me find this this bit here. Uh, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in, in here. Um, but basically the fact that since the mandate to force people to buy a product, whether they wanted it or not, is no longer there, is no longer in the thing, the the the, the bill is is, is um, unconstitutional after that. Not that they really care about the Constitution, but I, I never liked the idea of, of the Obamacare bullshit in the first place, and I'm glad to see it. Go, 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 goodbye! <laughs> if that does actually occur. Uh, it, it probably won't. Um, I, I would imagine this will be uh, his. This guy's decision will be reversed down the line, uh, just just because it, it's it got so ingrained into into the the system now. So uh, yeah, so th there's there's that on that. Uh, anyway, if it does go away, I'll I'll be pleased, I suppose, um, just because of the fact that I didn't like it. I I I, I never bought their health care, whether penalty or is not. I was not part of their system, and I will not be part of their system. I don't I don't go to these um these doctors of of, of horror. <laughs> I don't I don't believe in the medical industrial complex. Um and and so it, to me it's like who who really cares? But um there it is. There it is for you. So <laughs> All right. I, I, I just, it's not gone. No, it's not gone. But uh, this guy said it was unconstitutional, so they'll they'll battle it out and, and have some more good fun side shows for you. And uh, that's that's that on that. All right. This is an older article as okay, well. Uh, okay. This this is an older article as well from mm -hmm. July of 2016. But I was I was interested to see this because you don't really hear any any of them talking about it, any of the CLAP organizations talking about this. Uh, it's by Paul Sperry over here on NewYorkPost.com. Yes, the Saudi government helped the 9/11 terrorists. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I hear, I hear squeaky toy. That's my dog squeaking. The, his squeaky toy. He found the squeaker part of it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, He's Kate. Pretty... The penalties for Obama, for not buying Obamacare are gone. So, um, but like I said, I, I never bought it. I didn't care. You've crap about their freaking penalties. It wasn't, wasn't my deal. My system. <laughs> I never agreed to it. Anyway, anyway. So that's gone, and that's the reason that this judge used to say that Obamacare is now unconstitutional and all all has to go away. Um, we'll we'll see. It doesn't really matter though. It doesn't. It makes no difference. 
they're going to they're find another way to screw you if that's not the way they do it. Yeah. If, yep. it, if, it, if, it, if it comes to into Trump care, it'll just be another big screw job, and you'll have to deal with that. Anyway. <laughs> so here you we can't go. name the dog Do. 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 You gotta name him like Doc. Dude. Name him Dude. Like hey, Dude. dude. <laughs> How about Scruggs? <laughs> or the Dude. You could name him the Dude. All right. Yeah, the dude. <laughs> You're the dude. What is that? Oh, you can't say that. No. Doesn't roll off your tongue good enough. <laughs> it's, it's two syllables. Anyway, um, <laughs> now we know why the missing 28 pages of 9/11 uh, on 9/11 were kept under lock and key for 15 years. They show the hijackers got help across America from Saudi diplomats and spies in the run-up. To the to the attacks, because of a cover up, the Saudi terror support network may still be in place in the U.S. of A. <laughs> a CIA memorandum dated July second, two thousand two, stated unequivocally that the connection found between the hijackers, the Saudi embassy in Washington, and the Saudi consulate in Los Angeles were incontrovertible evidence that there is support for these terrorists within the Saudi government. Numerous FBI files also fingered two Saudi government employees who assisted the 9-11 hijackers as Saudi intelligence officers. Now, you may ask yourself, why would Saudi Arabia want to wanna, wanna attack the United States? Well, just kind of take a quick look at what happened to the price of oil after after 9/11. <laughs> anyway, there's a whole bunch of this story. I just wanted to, to share it with you because um, I hadn't seen it before, and like I said, it's from 2016, July of 2016, and to see one of these clap outlets talking about this, even though it's not the story that I believe. Um, it's it's still an interesting story, to be sure, especially since the U.S. is still good buddies with the Saudis, and they have been all along, knowing this information, or believing this information, whether uh, they believe it or not, right? Right? Hello, hello? <laughs> I was listening. I was just away from the keyboard for a second. All right. So... It's, you know. Okay, well, we're going to play another set of tunes All here. Right. And, uh, uh, pet Elvis for me. <laughs> oh, boy. This is a Cowboy Tech request. I think we already played this last week, but he requested it again. So here you go. It's the Doors. Dude, come on. I'd call her. I, I I don't know about you, but I'd call her. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. That uh, uh, that 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 is uh, in this moment uh, covering Blondie's "Call Me," and uh, yeah, yeah, I'd call her. <laughs> uh, anyway, before that, we had uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and uh, Carlos Santana doing "Deeper, Dig Deeper." And we kicked it off with a Cowboy Tech request there. The doors in five to one. One to five. Right. No one here gets out alive. Right. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Nobody gets out alive. It's just the way yep, it goes. And Morrison was a, is a, was a fellow Sag. Was that birthday it, was the anniversary of his birthday was December 8th. Okay. So he was a fellow Sag like me. Right on. So yeah, I that book. No one here gets all alive. You should read that book. Sure. Um, for sure. That's totally. One, that's the best biography on him that I've read. That's like the most famous. It's it's it's, a, <laughs> it's like the most famous book written about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, and it's written by people that like knew him, like knew him personally. Or it's written by a guy that interviewed people that knew him personally. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's good. Um, anyway, you got all you got all you got all you got all these names. Uh, Kate just suggested Satoshi. Name him Satoshi. That's isn't that Japanese? It could be. It just seems weird to name a Jack, Jack <laughs> Russell a Japanese name. <laughs> you can call him Blockchain. Name him name dog Blockchain. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Oscar. Uh, Oscar, I like that name, Oscar. Oscar would be good. It's a good Swedish name. Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh... Felix. I don't like Felix. It reminds me of the odd I, couple. I don't either. It reminds me of Felix Unger. Yeah, it reminds me of the odd couple. Or a cat. Or Felix yeah, the cat, so yeah. What? What? Or Casper. You can call him Casper. No, no, he's I, don't, pure white. I don't. I don't think so either. But <laughs> he's not pure white. No, that's more of a cat name anyway. That's like a white cat name. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be something, you know, easy to say. Something that could, you know, the dog's not going to confuse it with a sit or something, you know, or with, no. With what? With sit. Oh. Right. Like, you want, want to name your dog Kit. It's too close to sit. Duke. Nah, he's not a duke. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's like a lab or something. All right, all right, whatever. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it no more. <laughs> Me either, man. It's enough, it's enough. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> She's got a million dog names. Stuck down yes, in your head. I do. Rattling around my head. All right, let's talk about this. Company. Let's talk about this because I love this. All right. <laughs> is there a date on this thing? December 10th. Okay. So this is on Boston.com. All right. Here's why a Vermont man put up a giant illuminated middle finger sculpture on his front lawn. <laughs> okay. Uh, apparently, since for 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 drivers traveling on Northwest Vermont Route 128 <laughs> through Westford, it'd be hard not to notice the rather outsized impolite gesture. But don't, <laughs> but, but don't worry, uh, Ted Pelkey says the 700-pound wooden middle finger sculpture on his front lawn isn't for them. Rather, Pelkey says the sculpture, which sits atop of a 16-foot pole, the product of an uphill battle more than 10 years in the making with the, the local town officials over his garage wants to build uh, he wants to build on his property um i'm i'm not trying to cause hate and animosity to the people who live in the town because they're very good people in that town the 54 year old westford native says of his fellow residents in the 2000 person town all the people are very good people with the exception pelkey says of the Wester, westford select Board, development review board, and other town leaders who have blocked his efforts to get a permit to build the 8,000 square foot garage so he could move his truck repair bono filament recycling business uh, in, in nearby Swanton to his own property. Now, let me put this up here on the screen for you because, well, I think it's awesome that he went ahead and, and, and did this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I mean I, I can imagine um, myself doing a similar thing if if I was in battles with uh, with with whomever. Okay, there there you see he's got it lit up because he he put lights all over it so that the people yeah. the people uh, in the town could see this big flying finger yeah. pointing at them saying screw you people. I've been right. trying to do this. You got no right to tell me what I can and cannot do here in my town or, or here in my property. And let's see if we get the big, the big wooden one there. You can see it. Yeah. He's got all the fingers carved and everything. It's awesome. <laughs> he put it up there on top of this big old pole. Uh, there, pointing at the town, saying "fuck y'all." Yeah. Uh, and here's a like a kind of. A oh close, my god. Kind of a close up of it. Um, That's pretty. 
Brazen, I guess. Yeah, no, it, I guess it's brazen, but it's good. It's good that he did this. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, that, that was a lot of work, you know, doing that, but um, who the hell? Who, who the hell are these people? You see, he kind right. of like used a crane or something to get it to get it up there. Yeah, it looks like it's wooden. Yeah, it's made of wood. He, he carved it out of wood. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, I, I I love the story personally. Um, I like it. I and, like it. And and, and, and uh, I haven't seen any follow ups on it yet, but uh, hopefully he gets to build his garage and and uh, the, the, all these these governmental folk in that little. Permits you gotta get in the hoops. You gotta jump through. It's ridiculous. No, no. It says here. It says here that all over. Okay, you, you have to have permits for the garage and all that crap. But right. it says here they can't do anything about the big finger there because there's no rules against it. <laughs> right. They, they, that's, that's the best part about it. They they have rules they have rules against uh, putting up signs and things like that. But this is not a sign, although it it's kind of a sign, but not really. Uh, anyway, it says he hopes that he, uh, uh, according to uh, according to hope, Pelkey's appeal is set to have. Possible court hearing in January. Uh, the escalation in animosity hasn't made the process work any, or any more or less efficiently, but they sure can make the process uh, more challenging for all those involved. So, uh, uh, you know, you, when you want to screw with people, people will screw back. So yep. There's that. All right, well, we got to do our last set here. All right, um, let's do that. And uh, probably go a couple minutes over, but we started a couple minutes late, so yeah, what the hell, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Jerry and the boys, a moose girl request. Yes. Christopher Amoroso there, covering Black Betty and his little mechanical monkey. Uh, and before that, we had a Hansel request there. Frankie Ford, you talk too much from back in 1960. And we kicked it off with the Moose Girl request there. Grateful Dead doing Stella Blue. Ah, oh, yeah, very nice stuff. Good songs. Yes, it was. Yep, 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 yep. Um, and I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, just to let you know, over the weekend, we got tomorrow, we got the Dork Table with a Flash Somebody. And uh, hope, hopefully you all tune in to that. It'll be good. It'll be great. You'll have fun listening. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues. We'll be playing some tri trivia here in the chat room. And then following me will be Al Anthony behind the woodshed opening up a big old can of whoop-ass. Then on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will be on again uh, doing my new show, which is Grim Leftovers. Uh, so, uh, right. yeah, check it out. You know, it's just uh, stories I never had time to get to here on this show. I'll cover on that show. We're, right. we're working from the bottom up, and from this show, I work from kind of the top down uh, right. in, my, in my list of shit. And then uh, Tuesday <laughs> again is uh, is Flash once again uh, with his show in a perfect world. At 1 p.m. Eastern. Middle of the day there for y'all here. Although it's nighttime for him. And then uh, Wednesday and Friday, of course, is Grammy Mary in Grammy's Rocket Chair. And then we'll be back next Friday. Oh, yeah. Wait, what did it say? 21. Now, next Friday will be the uh, the x Math show. The yes, Solstice. Well. Solstice show. Yep. So, uh, I, got a, I got a ton of x Math requests in there already, but... If you got one you want to hear, just go ahead and request it during the week. Be glad to have you there with us on that. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yep. Anything else? Uh, any no, I just posted a um, an a opposite of the fuck you white story. I posted a, a link for a opposite of that story. All right. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it for me. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. See you next week. Peace. Yep. Peace.